สวัสดีครับ Good afternoon once again. So first, thank you to Dr. e p i s a m a i for the Thai language uh, summary just now. Uh, following Dr. e p i s a m a i we heard from Dr. c h u e t Sun from the Department of Disease Control, uh, discussing the adverse effects following immunization or AEFI. I'll perhaps uh, start off with that first and then continue on with the regular updates. So Dr. c h u e t Sun uh, talked about the side effects, the in detail, the the scientific data that we have as well as the numbers and the analysis. And also that a panel of experts evaluated the cause of death uh, after COVID vaccination in the various cases. So we have by far 103 fatalities reported after receiving COVID vaccine in Thailand. And of this number, 42 fatalities have now been evaluated by a panel of experts. Of, of the 42. Uh, we have uh, in this we have 20 were found not to be related to the vaccination, but occurred from other illnesses. We have four cases in this number that were found to be indeterminate. Therefore, it means that it can that it cannot be determined whether whether it is related to the vaccine or not. 18 cases were awaiting further information, and 61 cases are still under investigation or waiting for the autopsy result. So we're looking into all of the cases that are related, death, death, death cases related to vaccination, whether they are actually AEFI or or not. So. I'd just like to start off first with the vaccination progress that we have since we started on the 28th of February. Yesterday, we administered 200, over 251,000 doses yesterday on the 23rd of June 2021. This brings us to over 8 million doses, uh, exactly 8.4 plus million doses administered so far. It's expected if that if we administer around 250,000 doses per day, we will be able to reach the target of 10 million doses in June. And you have some details of that on screen for you, uh, classified by the uh, first or the second doses in terms of the uh, shots administered uh, yesterday on the 23rd of June. And for the number of cases that we have recorded for today, quite alarming that we have a high number of new confirmed cases uh, yesterday. It was in the 3,000 uh, mark per, per day. Uh, today, we recorded 4,108 cases. Out of those, 229 are from within the penitentiaries and prisons. We have new recoveries at 1,578. So therefore, the new cases outnumber the new recoveries for today. Total. Uh, cases still being treated, active cases. We have 39,517, you see in the green box on top. Now this number is kind of fluctuating. It goes down on some days and, go, and a few days it, come, it comes up. So hoping that the trend will be downward. And of these active cases, we have recorded 1,562 as in critical condition. So out of 39,000, only 1,005 are in critical, critical condition. And while 445 cases of this number are those on ventilators. For fatalities, unfortunately, 31 fatalities recorded today, making the cumulative 1,775. So in the overall situation, we're ranked 76 now in the world for the number of total COVID cases since the very beginning. The number of cases seems to be on the rise, as well as the number of cases with severe symptoms and those that are reported from within the healthcare system. This is particularly for the case of Bangkok and surrounding provinces. We have 67 provinces reporting new COVID cases today. The majority are still located in the central region of the country and also the southern part of the country. So. We have on screen now, coming up for you, a slide on the top 10 provinces that recorded COVID cases today. Number one, as you see, is Bangkok at 1,359 cases, followed by other provinces which are around 300 and lower, which is uh, Samut Prakan, for example, at uh, 297, 
So it's Sakhon, Chonburi, and the other provinces. Around 200, uh, one, uh, 100 to 200 ish. That, that's the top, top 10, uh, apart from Bangkok. Now, in Bangkok, in in particular. Uh, quite of concern in terms of the new clusters because previously, yesterday, we had 96 clusters recorded in Bangkok. Today, we have recorded 99, three new clusters in Bangkok. And this is found in 42 districts within Bangkok. Three new clusters include in Bangkapi district, in Bangrak and Bangkuntian districts in Bangkok. But however, the active case findings continue. We have uh, cases uh, cases from active case finding may, mainly located from uh, within within Bangkok and has resulted in more hospital beds being used in these areas as I mentioned yesterday about the issue of the hospital bed capacity so the CCSA was discussing the expansion of hospital capa bed capacity as well as the capacity of medical personnel and some options include the maximizing of the use of space of existing facilities and the possibility of home quarantine. Also, in recruiting assistance from medical personnel in private hospitals to come and help, as well as medical personnel from the provinces as well outside of Bangkok. Also, newly graduated medical students as well. And they will have their role in this uh, mission, as well as increasing the ICU facilities in some of the hospitals. Now, the Dr. Apisamai also mentioned that the EOC meeting this morning discussed the issue about the beds, uh, as well as bringing this issue to just be a discussion with the private, uh, various private hospitals as well. And she mentioned a few names of a few hospitals uh, in Thailand that are, that will be willing to assist the CCSA with uh, this need in terms of the hospital bed capacity and the personnel capacity as well. The CCSA meeting this morning also discussed the situation in the provinces, which reported a high number of cases and new clusters. For example, new clusters detected at a factory, uh, which manufactures rubber products in a shrimp manufacturing uh, factory in Samut Sakhon as well. There was also a new cluster found in a child care center in Batum Thani province and a processed uh, seaweed factory, seaweed producing factory in Nontaburi province. So as we analyze the trends for the various parts of the country in terms of the uh, COVID situation, we have made uh, the following observations. That the cases in the northern and southern region are mainly from social gatherings, northern and southern region. The northeastern Isan part has focused on its efforts on screening people who travel from areas with local transmission or risk areas. So those traveling from outside the north northeastern region into the northeastern region, that's the focus for that area. The central region and the eastern region have detected cases within business establishments, factories, markets, uh, with vendors who traveled from many provinces and surrounding community. So you can see that as per the analysis that we have, each region has its own um, issue, its own, its, own, uh, its own causes of, in terms of the increase of the COVID situation. In, in the Isan province, it's more of uh, inbound travel uh, to the region. In the central region, more of those in the business establishments. And north and south, because of social gatherings. So we must take heed of all of this and be very, very careful. The clusters in the central region and the eastern region were detected in worker camps as well and surrounding communities, which have since been addressed with the bubble and seal measures. In terms of the economic uh, alleviation measures, I'll touch a little bit on that. The government is concerned with uh, the segments of the population which have been heavily affected by the current wave and continues its efforts for to alleviate the society's uh, economic hardship. So on Tuesday, uh, two days ago, the cabinet, appro cabinet approved the plan to send out 1,000 mobile grocery vans to sell products at discounted prices of up to 40% across the country. And these vans will be sent out to communities and villages nationwide. The aim to assist the public with their daily expenses and stimulate household consumption across the country as well as to reduce unnecessary travel in order to lower the risk of infections. And uh, after this, we'll be having more information in a program from the uh, Center for the Economic Situation as well, the CESA. 
to provide with more you with more details. So just in closing, I'd just like to mention a little bit about uh, New Normal. We have an infographic there uh, from the World Health Organization, as always, and thank you the WHO for, for that. And as vaccines are just uh, one of the tools to help in the pandemic, it is our responsibility to reduce transmissions by keeping our guard up and observing basic safety measures. So please continue to practice all the measures to protect yourselves and others from COVID-19. You see the infographic there that COVID is merely bidding its time, waiting, waiting for us to let our guard down. If we look at it from that perspective, we must be very, very careful. We must be on guard all the time because COVID is looking, is looking for us, looking for the time that we put our guard down or pause a bit or in, in, in those sense. So please continue to practice the protective uh, measures that we have been talking a lot. And you see there are hashtag uh, stay, stay safe. So with that, I thank you for your attention, and we'll see you again next time. Sorry, Kap.